What's up everyone, my name is Zach and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am gonna be introducing a brand new series that I'm doing directly following up what the did I just read. I'm doing a new series, which was voted on by the Mostly Ghostly crew, who are members of my channel membership who vote on content. And uh, I wanted them to vote on what kind of series I was going to do next. And so they chose reading books that I feel like the covers are really nice or pretty of and seeing if the book itself is actually good. I guess it kind of plays on that judging a book by its cover <laughs> idea that we all do, rather we say that we do or not. Most of us do that. I know I do. I will straight up buy a book just because I really like the cover. Part of that's because I really enjoy like fan art and looking at characters from the books itself, although the characters aren't always on covers. In fact, they rarely are. Though I have seen a trend recently where it seems to be more and more popular, especially in romance novels, for the characters to be on the covers. But anywho. So yeah, that's what this series is going to be, is going to be basically judging a book by its cover and seeing if the book itself is actually good. The first book that I am going to do in this series, which will be for this whole reading vlog or video, um, this will be spoiler free, but I am going to do The Invisible Hour by Alice, Alice Hoffman. She is the author of Practical Magic, which is very popular. It was made into a movie. Um, I have not watched the movie or read that book, but this is a completely separate book. This just released a few days ago, this past Tuesday, and the reviews of it are very interesting. So before I talk about that, I just want to say like I picked this book because I absolutely love this cover. It, like It's very fall. I love the colors that they used. Like, I just, I really, really love this cover. It's actually one of my favorite of the year. Uh, so yeah, I'm, that's why I picked it. But let me tell you a little bit about what it's about. I am just going to read you what is written on the flap. So, one brilliant June day when Maya Jacob can no longer see a way to survive, the power of words save her. The Scarlet Letter was written almost 200 years earlier, but it seems to tell the story of Maya's mother, Ivy, and their life inside the community. An oppressive cult in Western Massachusetts where contact with the outside world is forbidden and books are considered evil. But how could this be? How could Nathaniel Hawthorne have so perfectly captured the pain and loss that Maya carries inside her? Through a journey of heartbreak, love, and time, Maya must abandon the rules she was raised with it with in the community. As she does, she realizes that reading can transport you to other worlds or bring them to you, and that readers and writers affect one another in mysterious ways. She learns that time is more fluid than she can imagine, and that love is stronger than any chains that bind you. As a girl, Maya fell in love with a book. Now as a young woman, she falls in love with a brilliant writer as she makes her way back in time. But what if Nathan Hawthorne never wrote The Scarlet Letter? And what if Maya Jacob never found it on the day she planned to die? Nathaniel Hawthorne wrote, a single dream is more powerful than a thousand realities. This is the story of one woman's dream. For a little while, it came true. I find that just really compelling and, and very interesting. So not only is it about this cover, but I'm very interested to see how the story is going to play out. It's also relatively short. Let me tell you a little bit about the reviews, though. This has not gotten very good reviews on Goodreads, and usually that would be enough to stop me, though I'm trying more and more to not let that impact me because we all read differently. I also have this oh, this idea that like people are getting harder and harder as they're rating and reviewing things, not only in books, but video games and other media. Like People just seem to be, I don't know, more and more picky. And yeah, I don't know. So I try, I'm trying to not take reviews and ratings that seriously anymore. The complaint that was in every single review that I read that was not good, so three stars or below, they all have a very similar complaint. Knowing that complaint going into this, I think is gonna set me up for a success because it's it all. everybody said that halfway through the book, the book shifts and there is a time travel element that they were not expecting, which I'm kind of like, I don't know, it clearly kind of says that in the synopsis, but apparently it changes and completely shifts perspectives and goes back in time. And people found that really jarring and they felt like the story didn't flow well after that and thought that it was boring after that point. I may also feel that way. We're going to find out at the end of this vlog, but I don't know. I think knowing that element is going to happen going in will help me not feel as like, you know, like it might not feel as jarring for me, but we'll see. We're going to find out. I do really want to annotate this. I went back and forth because like, if I don't like it, then I'm going to sell it. But because that's what I do with all my books I don't like. So I'm probably going to be taking a risk by doing that. But I just, I don't know, the premise of this sounds so good that I, I really just, I don't know, I want to take my time and let this soak in. So 
we'll see. This is going to be episode one of the series, judging a book by its cover. So let's find out if this really pretty cover cover is actually a, has actually a really good story in it. Let's find out. Hi friends. So I am currently 50 pages into The Invisible Hour and I have updates for you all. So let me kind of set up the story and tell you a little bit more about what it's about. So I know I read the back flap, but I'm going to describe like what's happened since I've been reading the book and it'll be spoiler free. I'm just kind of setting up the very basic beginning of the story. So the story starts off with a girl named Ivy who lives in Boston with her parents. She starts dating a guy who goes to Harvard and she ends up getting pregnant. And when she goes home to tell her family that she's pregnant, her dad like slaps her across the face and is like, you're going to get rid of the baby. He wants to send her off to this place where she can stay at like the school. I don't know, it's weird. And then she would have the baby and it would be um, given up for adoption. So she ends up leaving in the middle of the night because she's like, I don't want to do that. I want to keep my child. And she's in a train station and she meets a girl. Um, and the girl is like, yeah, I'm heading to this community where everyone's loved and accepted. And so she goes with Kayla to the community, which might sound far-fetched, but recently, I've been watching a lot of documentaries about cults. In particular, there's a documentary on either HBO or Hulu. I think it might be Hulu. It could even be Netflix, I don't know, about the sex cult that was taken down um, not too long ago. I don't remember the name of it. I don't even remember the guy's name, but it's a very long documentary. I didn't even watch the whole thing. I just listened to some of it while Casey was watching it. But you'd be surprised how people end up in cults. Like, So I, at first I was like, well, this feels far-fetched, but in reality, it's not very far-fetched. So they end up at this community and she's still pregnant, Ivy is. And the like cult leader of this community falls in love with her, falls in love. And, um, oh yeah, I was gonna read you guys. I ended up starting to annotate it. You probably can't see well from this angle. Um, but I was gonna read you guys the rules. So it says, um, no acts of wickedness, no anarchy or antisocial behavior, no contact with original families, no contact with the outside world and their judgments, no reading novels or attending public school, no betrayals or disloyalty, no greed, no personal possessions, no vanity, no selfish behavior, no idle hands, no, immor no immorality, no terminating pregnancies. Children belong to everyone. Love is everywhere. There is only one family and it is us. That is very important, that last sentence. Children belong to everyone, love is everywhere, and there is only one family and it is us. So the guy ends up falling in love with her. She has the baby. And when she has her child, her child's name is Maya, which getting engrossed in the very beginning of this, I forgot that Maya is actually our main character and not Ivy. And so um, uh, Ivy marries the, the cult leader guy and has her baby and is separated after she gets seven days alone with her and then she's separated from her child um, because the baby belongs to everyone and she doesn't get to spend time with her. And so enter Maya, Maya starts to grow up in this community. And one day they are at like in town and they do, they sell things in town and they were in town and Maya asks her mom what a library is. So her mom, Ivy uh, loves books and uh, her her dad had always like told her how important reading was despite his awfulness about her pregnancy. And so Ivy allows Maya to go into a library very quickly and Maya falls in love with books. She eventually gets a library card and starts checking out books and sneaking them back to the community. She hides in the barn and reads them at night and falls in love with reading. And that is basically where I'm at right now. Um, this is a very heartbreaking, but beautifully written story. It's perfect for fall. So if you're watching this video as it's coming out and this book just released, this is a good book to read in the fall. I mean, this cover itself is just all about fall. Um, the writing is just, it's not too hard to understand. It's not so lyrical that you're like, okay, but where's the plot? But there are some really good lines. Like I said, I'm annotating it as I go. I think had I not known like kind of what I talked about in the intro to this, that there's going to be this abrupt turn to Nathan Hawthorne, I can understand why people were like, but I wanted more of the community aspect at 50 pages in, I'm still reading that part of it, but I, I could see why that would feel abrupt, but we'll see when I get there so far. I absolutely love this. Um, yeah. Stay tuned to find out more. Bye. Think by now I know better 
Locked in my head, romanticizing forever. Last love I found, knees met the ground, and all my roses died. Swore I was through, but looking at you, I think I changed my mind. Yeah, let's fall in love for the fun of it. Diving at first, and all of it. Oh, what a rush! Okay, hi, friends. So I am. Still reading The Invisible Hour. I am at the part now. I'm 130-ish pages in, and I'm at the part now where it's going to switch to Nathan Hawthorne. So I've finished, you know, the first half of the book where we have our main character, Maya, who is at the community. I can't really say anything else about the plot, as I think that everything that you read in this book is important. I will say that it is fairly slow paced, but at, but it also reads quickly. It's a very interesting combination of something that's slow paced and reads quickly. But I was annotating it, you know, with pencil, just highlighting some things here and there and some tabs. And I actually decided to take them out and erase the few pencil markings that I had in it because... I don't know that this is something I'm going to want to keep. I may end up selling it. I would say right now I'm sitting at a four star. We'll definitely see what happens when we switch perspectives to Nathan. Um, I, I can see where, again, if you didn't know about it going in, that it could be really jarring because we do get so used to being in Maya's perspective and we follow her life for a really long time. It almost feels like her story has concluded and the first 130 pages could have just been like this novella where this girl goes through this awful experience of being part of a cult and really connects with an author and feels very close to him. I will say there are some really beautiful scenes and a lot of imagery using the earth and nature that is absolutely beautiful. This book is worth reading for that alone. Again, I'm thinking it's probably going to be a four star, but it really is going to depend how Maya's perspective and Nathan's perspective connect. If we never go back to Maya's perspective, that's going to really drop my rating. Although I feel hypocritical saying that, also saying that it feels like her story has ended. So I don't know. It, it's all going to depend what's going to happen in this last half of the book. So I have about 130 pages left. It's only about 260 pages. It's a pretty small book. So I think I'm going to finish it today. It's currently Saturday and I don't have a lot else going on. I very easily could jump on my computer and start playing video games, but I'm trying to be more intentional about spending more time physically reading. And I think I could easily knock this out. So I'll probably end up finishing this today and then I'll let you guys know um, if the cover, if the book was truly as beautiful as this cover, which is absolutely stunning. And also looking at this cover now after reading the book it does serve a purpose like this imagery is in the book and in particular in this cult when you do things that are against the rules like in typical cults the guy cuts your hair off so the point that's being made here with this woman's hair being so beautiful reminds me of how terrible this cult is and the bad things that go on inside it yeah it's definitely a very feminist book, which is really cool. Um, so I'm definitely enjoying that aspect. We'll see what happens for the rest of the book. All right, I'll see you guys at the end. Bye. All right. Hello, friends. Would this really be a vlog if I weren't outside by these trees at some point with my dogs updating you all? No, it would not. Anyways, I have finished this book. It's probably about three or four hours later. I don't actually know what time it is right now. But I'm happy to report that I'm giving this 4.5 stars. It was very, very close to a five star. And the cover, definitely the story is as beautiful as this cover. So, you know, I've talked a lot about how people felt about the second half of the book. And I can see why they felt that way. However, and I think had I not known that going in, it would have felt jarring and it almost feels like two separate books at times, but the author does weave them together so well. And I think the point that people might be missing or hadn't thought of or maybe thought of in retrospect, I don't want to act like I'm smarter than anyone else. But the, the point that I got from this is that this really is a few different like love letters. It's a love it's a love letter to libraries and readers and books who save people. And it's also a love letter to like the conversations that authors and readers have together that remain unsaid. Like when we read a book, we are sort of having a conversation with that author and we're getting like a piece of their life and a piece of their story, as well as putting a piece of our lives and our story into this work of art. So... I think that you should know going into this is a slow story. Um, it 
is tough to read at times. There's a lot of like, you know, like cults are no joke. <laughs> and some of that stuff was like hard, hard to swallow at times. But as far as like, I, this is a character study. I mean, there's slightly is a pot, plot, but it pretty much is a character study. Also, it's if you've been craving like a time travel novel, this does have time travel in it. And I think it's done well. It's done in a way that makes sense. It's not complicated at all, but it's not like under explained. It just is. And I really, really enjoyed that element of it. I'm happy to report that like this being one of my favorite covers, I, the story is really good and definitely lives up to that. Like that was a whole point of this series. And this first video is going to be hard to beat because yeah there is definitely imagery from this book that i will never forget I, again i i was thinking at times like oh i might want to keep this um but i just don't think this is a story you read twice it's a story that you read once and you kind of just like like let it sit with you and let it live within you but you don't really need to read it again and i don't i don't know if that makes sense because it's like the more i love a story the more i want to read it again but it's almost like a story that you just need to experience once so I think I am going to sell my copy. And as I'm looking at the cover, I recognize that Christina, Christine Hannah, who I've never read any of her books, but she blurbed this and it says a fantastical mystical journey that celebrates the joy and power of reading and dares to believe in the impossible. That 100% describes this book to a T. A first episode, I think this was a major success. So I'm very excited to do the next one. I already know what book I'm going to pick and I'm very excited to dive into that. I hope you guys enjoy this series. I think judging a book by its cover is something we all do no matter how much we say that we don't. And I hope that I will discuss like how much of that feeling is actually like intuitive and worth it and how much of it is like a load of crap i have a guess it's it's gonna come out to be like negligible or like 50 50 and like doesn't actually matter but i think it'll be a fun little like exploration so let's continue on this journey but here's to episode one the invisible hour by alice hoffman I'm 